What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, I have Shield B's 40 terabyte ultimate console. It's almost done, got a couple of things, but we got some new stuff on this one. Alright guys, you know the drill, I always say it on my videos, if you are not following me, what are you doing, why are you not following me on Instagram, at Vic underscore VP, I do stress that a lot because I do post a lot on the stories, Instagram and their stories, it goes away after 24 hours, it's kind of a cool way to follow me day by day, um, you know, you do get a couple of family posts, but it is mostly arcade related stuff, and I film a lot of like the build, so again, I try not to overclock or overfeed the YouTube stuff, I'll talk about streaming in a second and all that, but again, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Vic underscore VP. If you were, you would have seen this PC right here. This is Shield B. I don't ever do official names. I never really say the customer's names. I kind of go by like either their email address and all that, and obviously it's not just Shield B and the email address, but this right now is Shield B. Uh, basically, sent me a request, said, hey Vic, I want an ultimate 40 terabyte console, but I do want an, a couple extra games uh, very specific stuff. So I'm going to go in depth on this. I do want to try to film this as a one single shot thing, but I can already tell you it's not going to happen because, you know, I look at my phone and I get like a little script going and I do want to at least try to get a single shot when it comes to actually going in hyperspin and all that. Um, I do read your comments. I read everybody's comments on YouTube and stuff. I do also try to live stream at night. Again, it's a little, it's a little difficult with a, you know, one and a half year old. But uh, definitely trying to get a couple of the live streams going. I was streaming this specific PC, bouncing around. I do get a lot of requests of, hey, Vic, can you just, you know, launch like five games in one system within Hyperspin? And, you know, I see a couple of errors from other Hyperspin builders and Rocket Launcher. And I do try to get those videos, honestly, on live streams because it's live. You can really see how it is live. I did add a new kind of live uh, link to my website so you can definitely check that out if you go there you will see past live kind of things the reason why i don't you don't if you go to my youtube channel you don't see the live uh i do have it set as like un unregistered or something like that only because if i kept it like live and public it is public but you need the link that's why if you go to the website you will see the live stream uh it's just like in the beginning when i was doing live streaming of like the switch cabinet um my like youtube video like history my list like my videos were just a ton of lives and uh it just didn't look good because again it's it's that's just my personal thing it just it was just live after live after live and then all of a sudden an arcade build promo video so if you do want to see live streams go to my website there is a tab now for a live stream so again i do live stream uh you won't see it in the history only because it also kind of floods your feed and your kind of like if you go to my if you go to YouTube and you look up Vic VP, it's just going to be like a ton of live stream. So I just want to keep it clean. That's also kind of why I guess like, you know, Retro Ralph has two separate channels. I don't want to separate my channels. I got to keep it one. I'm lucky to have all you guys and all the followers and the subscribers and the comments and the likes and all that. So there's no way that I could make a separate YouTube uh, for just live streaming. So now there's going to be one of maybe two or three videos for Shield B. Um, right now I'm taking advantage because I basically have the system set. We are, I am waiting on light guns. He did add light guns to this build. So unfortunately aim track is sold out right now, but I did get a hint that they will come back in stock in about a week. So again, every time a customer either purchases a cabinet or whatever, it's, you know, got to get to work. Once I get a deposit, I start working. Yes. You need to send me a deposit to start any work. Cause I, I don't do anything other than that. Um, so she'll be sent me a deposit. I went out, I got a computer, I set up everything. And again, it's not a simple copy and pasting. Like I say in all my videos, it is a solid two to three weeks alone on configuring. That's not ROM transferring. I did do a live stream. Somebody did ask me, Hey Vic, how long does it take to transfer 40 terabytes? No BS. You're looking at a week to a week and a half of just transferring over the ROMs. No, I am not BSing it. That is just how long it takes. So again, some people say, hey Vic, how long does it take for an ultimate console to be made? It does take some time. I usually like to give the range of a 30 to a 60 day kind of setup. And me personally, as like I said, I'm a one man team. I only do this whenever I do an ultimate console. 
I only do one at a time. There is no way that I do three and then I don't do that. This is one. So old, this is right here, Shield Bees build. It's been in my basement. I've been doing a lot of work on it. A lot of add-ons because again, he does have a couple of extra games and systems that he did want, which basically we're gonna go over that today. But again, stay tuned, there will be more videos. Again, like I said, I did already two or three live streams with this. Uh, and uh, let's just get into it. We're gonna talk about the system first because this has a couple of extras that I've never done before. The main thing, this is running Windows 11. I did want to give it a try. I was looking at research. I did a lot of research on, you know, as far as emulation on Windows 11. Not many hiccups, not many, you know, headaches. A lot of people were saying that it's positive feedback. And the PC that I got, it already had Windows 11 on it. So I said to myself, I will run Windows 11. I'm going to set everything up. Let's see how Windows 11 reacts. Worst case scenario, I will just wipe the C drive, which is basically my main hyperspin stuff and obviously Windows stuff. And I'll just bring it back to Windows 10 if it all doesn't work out. But in all honesty, Windows 11 did work. Again, I was I, looking at 90, I'm looking at the screen right now. It's 96 systems. Again, I was originally at 91, I believe. Now we're at 96 because again, he had a couple of extras and all that. But all in all, Windows 11 does work. Um, we'll go into it right now because I'm already into it. Um, let's talk about the system itself. So let's bring it up. So this right now is running a 12th gen. I'm basically reading this kind of area on the bottom left. This is running a 12th gen i5. Yes, Vic, you said i7. I'm going to go into the details on like, you know, why I chose this. Let's go slow. This is running an i5 12th gen with the K, the K means it is overclockable. So keep that in mind on this one. Yes, this is running 32 gigs of RAM. Again, we do have one terabyte SSD. That is a Samsung Evo SSD for the boot. And I do have four 12 terabyte uh, Seagate XO 7200 RPM hard drives on this. As you can see on the bottom right, you can see all the data, how much it filled up and such. And the big thing, the graphics card on this is a RTX 3070 Ti. Woo! The specs on this, again, blown out. Again, Shield B messaged me and he goes, Vic, you do the computer. I want you to do it. Again, I do have people that do send me their computer. That is perfectly fine when you give me the reins, and especially for the fee, I don't cheap out. I do not cheap out. My main numbers are an i7, 16 to 32 gigs of RAM, and either a 3060, 3060 or a 3060 Ti or higher. And as you can see, for Shield B, I got him a 3070 Ti. I got him 32 gigs of RAM. And again, I'm gonna go into this i5 now. Micro Center is my main kind of supplier. Uh, I'm lucky in New York to have five micro centers, yes. Within like a 60 or 50 mile radius, I have five micro centers. Basically, I shop around almost every night and I see the deals and such. Micro Center had a great deal on a i7, 16 gigs of RAM with a 3060 in it. Or this one here, as you can see, it is an i5, 16 gigs of RAM originally that it came with and a 3070 Ti. So I was kind of torn. I was like, okay i7 but a 3060 or an i5 and a 3070 ti and again yes this is a pre-built computer from micro center obviously not the 48 terabytes and all that and the extra ram honestly micro center makes amazing stuff i don't use their cases though they use a leon lee case it's kind of a cheap case i basically buy this pre-built pre i pull out the guts and then i put it into a bigger case with more RGB and more fans and all that. It's kind of mayhem. You'll see that physically, it's right next to me. You'll see that in another video. So I was torn between these two machines and I basically did a quick kind of search, test bench search you could say, and I was basically trying to compare the i7 10th gen to the 12th gen i5 that you see here. And according to my research, a 12th gen i5 not overclocked, was more powerful than the 10th gen i7. So just like anybody else, I went with this build. And the big thing again, that this is running a 3070 Ti in it. 
Again, amazing specs. I also, just for kicks, I said, you know what? I got a great deal on this PC. I'm gonna hook up my guy Show B, and I did add the 32 gigs of RAM. So again, it was 16 gigs originally out of the box, and I added another 16 gigs. It was a great deal going on, and boom, you got 32 gigs of RAM on this build. Now again, this is running Windows 11. You could kind of tell by the toolbar on the bottom right here that yes, this is running Windows 11, and also you could see it uh, right here. It does say a Windows 11 Pro on this. So again, I was when I first sat down and I kind of booted up the computer, there's a lot of steps that I take. Um, big thing also, an advantage for Micro Center, they don't put bloatware. It is like a clean PC install, which is amazing. Um, I right now have another customer's computer. Uh, he's going to be getting a Bivik cabinet ultimate console setup. Um, and he bought a computer, I think it was on Amazon, and it comes with bloatware. That is your basics. That is how it always is. But Micro Center is notorious for not having any bloatware. I mean, any, not even little. There's just no bloatware. These are clean PCs. So the one that I got from Amazon, the customer sent me, I just have to kind of sit down and kind of remove the bloatware, which is perfectly fine. Or I will just wind up reinstalling Windows. Uh, usually that is the safest bet. Talking about Windows 11, that's what I want to do here real quick. I started again, like I said, I have my main, I have my basic steps that I do take. Um, I think I can go full screen on this. Might as well keep it on this. I have like my main steps. Whenever I build these PCs, I have my, my basic steps. Number one is yes, I got to put the drives in, I put the SATA cables, I got to clean the wiring and all that. That takes about a day and a day or two alone. Uh, again, this is running four 12 terabyte hard drives, not SSDs, hard drives. The one terabyte M.2 SSD is perfect for the boot and for hyperspin main files and the emulators and such. So I did my basic stuff, I put everything in and then I went into basically configuring. I go in and I configure RK to the controls. Also, I forgot to mention, he does have four Xbox One controllers. I have all the boxes brand new with one Windows USB dongle. So this system right now is again, it's your basic ultimate 40 terabyte gaming console. Uh, and again, he is getting the aim tracks on this. I'm just waiting for them to come in. Those will be wired and such. Um, where was I going with that? So again, like I said, I got the Xbox controllers and I was basically configuring RK to my controls. I go and I configure NES to the controls. I have, again, like I said, I test everything and such. Got everything good to go. I would say a good 80% of the emulators worked. Like, no issues at all. I got into a couple of smaller ones and the main ones which is really what he wanted and i'll go i'm going to go into that stuff later on but a couple of the emulators that he wanted i noticed that i was not getting any sound like no sound i could hear like the windows chime i'm going to just make sure my thing is here oh i'm not even in the elgato yeah like i could i could see that as you could see as you could see you could hear you could hear the windows chime but like i said i on a couple of emulators, I was not getting any sound whatsoever and kind of freaked me out. I thought it was maybe my speakers or something like that. Anyway, doing a lot of research, no joke, maybe for about a week. Uh, main systems was a couple, not all of them, but a couple of open board games and MS-DOS. I got no sound. I couldn't figure it out. I was kind of panicking. I was like, what the hell is going on? Is it something wrong with the motherboard? Basically, when it comes to Windows 11, there is this thing called direct sound and you actually have to go in and readjust it. Basically some kind of SFX. I literally, you have to go into the registry edit file and I basically had to change a word, literally a word. I had to go into the registry edit and I had to take this direct sound, edit the name, boom, it was done. All my MS-DOS games work, all the sound works. It, they worked. But I just got no sound. It was driving me nuts up a wall. And again, this customer does want, and I'm going to go into it, he does want a lot of open board games. So he sent me a big list. I'm talking about 50 games. And that's what I want. I tell people all the time, if you want something specific, you got to let me know specifically what you want. This customer right here should be as big on hacked games and he's big on open board. He's huge on open board. Again, he sent me an email and he actually even wrote that like, I must have this, I must have this. And that is awesome, that is A-OK. -okay. I sit down, I downloaded these games that he wanted. Out of like the 50 games, two of them I couldn't get. 
Uh, one is because it's like again, open board is a is a, is a, is a user created. They basically take like a game and then put like their own sprites or characters. Uh, and two of them, one of them was like a demo, which was like only one round, which I have it, but I'm going to count that as it doesn't work. It's a demo. And the other one is just like a work in progress, WIP. So somebody basically posted a video on YouTube of this game, but you can't download this game because it's a work in progress. The author never posted it publicly. So again, you let me know what you want. I'm going to try my hardest to get it working. So again, he's big on open board. He's big on hacked games and he's big on like the current gen PC stuff and all that. He just wants, he said, Vic, whatever systems and games you can put on this, I, I want it. Just put it. I said, okay, cool. Coincidentally, somebody, and I can't, I feel bad because I can't go back. Somebody commented on one of my hyperspin videos and I love the comments. It's a okay, whether they're rude or they're cool or they're calm or their questions down to answer it. Somebody wrote, and again, I'm sorry for your name. I, I don't remember your name, but you hit me with a question and I said, you know what? I'm going to try it with this. So this YouTube comment, I, I want to post it, but I, I can't find it. Um, basically, this person said, hey, Vic, I noticed that you don't have the 3DO. I noticed that you don't have Sega Saturn, but you do have the, the Jaguar. You have the Atari Jaguar. Why don't you have the other two? And I told people, I said, listen, you know, me personally, I, don't, I never grew up with a 3DO. I never grew up with the Sega Saturn. But if you want it, I'm going to try my best to do it. So try to picture it as this person commented. I commented back saying, listen, I'm, I'm 31. I don't know those systems, but if you want it, I'm going to try it. Person messaged me back. He goes, well, you know, it's cool. You have the, the, the Jaguar, but I heard that emulation is difficult. You might get crashing or it doesn't emulate at all. Also along with the 3DO and along with the Sega Saturn. I said, you know what? I kind of like those kind of comments because I'm like, okay, that's a challenge. You're telling me that this emulator doesn't work. I don't know if it's true. This is what somebody wrote me. I didn't sit there and go, can you, I don't do that. I'm just the type where I go, Hey, you know what? I have the ROMs. I'm going to test out the emulator. If it works, I'm going to add it. And basically what I'm getting at is that this customer shield B is getting Sega Saturn, the 3DO, and I've always had the Jaguar on it and we'll do some gameplay. I'll launch it and such. So, Again, I do have a couple of more games. Going back to Open Bore on this, um, for Shield B, originally my list of Open Bore only had a hundred. I only had a hundred Open Bore games, and as you can see at the bottom, we now hit four hundred and two Open Bore games. So, again, with this specific customer's build, there is a couple of add-ons going on. So, Open Bore was big on it. Um, again, the hacked games. And we might as well do a quick kind of add on. I'm not going to be put the, the open board I updated on my list. There are basically two wheels that I'm not putting on my main build your drive because I don't know if people want it. It's small files. I'm thinking about adding it, but now it's kind of going into like the filler stuff. Me personally, I do not like the whole like hacked games, but listen, people like it. She'll be is one of those people and Hey, you want it. I will supply it. No worries. Um, so I'm basically bringing out my calculator before this, you were looking at 36,000 games, right? My regular 40 terabyte. I don't know what it is now because I added games. And as you can see with like my list here, there are, there is space open again. It's 48 terabytes. It's four 12 terabytes, four times 12 is 48. But as you can see out of a 12 terabyte drive, you only get 10.9. So there are a couple of drives that do have openings such as the D drive has three point almost five terabytes open the D drive. I do like this open because all the PC games, which basically is the next step for she'll be if he wants a new PC game, I'll make a video on how you could download it. Um, but they will go right into that drive. So he has no need to worry. I personally always like to leave at least 500 gigs open on each drive. Whoa, Vic, half a terabyte. Yes, because you have to understand that some of these files are zipped and rocket launcher has to unzip the file that eats up space. And if you don't have space, then you're going to get errors saying, Hey, you know, it's unable to unzip and you ran out of storage and then you go into panic. I always aim for that. But as you can see, there is open space on all these drives. Again, 48 terabytes four 12 terabyte drives. Obviously I don't have 48 terabytes worth of games, but you never know with all the add ons and stuff, it could hit that. But again, no BS, no filler, as you can see here. 
Now, real quick, like I said, I did update my personal list on like open board and all that. So I went from 100 games to 402. So that's 300 games alone. I'm going to show you real quick the two extras. A couple of the basic systems like the Genesis, it gained like seven hacked games. So I did add those to my regular list because it's only seven games. You're talking about like, no joke, like 500 megs. It's not that big of a deal. But... The two that I don't have on my build your own drive is this here. So NES hacks, look at this. We'll let this go. Basically the NES hacks, I believe is going to have around 2000 games on it. And as you can see, the wheel goes <laughs> and boom, you got 2738, 2700 games on that. Again, I don't want, you know me. I'm not going to go now and go, oh, shit, I went from 36,000 games to 38. Again, Shield B likes his hacked game, so he's definitely now in the 38, almost probably 40,000 games list. But, again, if you want hacks, you let me know. There is a lot. You can just see, like, look at this, like, Adventures of Lolo. Like, there's a lot. I know, like, Mario Kart or something like that or Super Mario Bros. has a bunch of worlds. Again... I personally will not have this on my personal setup, but if you want it, you let me know. So the NES was one wheel, and the Super NES is another wheel at 452. Again, 452 games is a lot. Imagine now, if, imagine if I was the type to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to take this list and then just put it in the Super Nintendo list. Uh, you can already see the NES went 2,000. So imagine this 788 Super Nintendo games plus 400 with the hacks. It's... It's not going to look good. Not to mention these games here, the hack games, there is no artwork. There is no videos, obviously. So you just get kind of a title box and that's it. The other one, which is pretty cool. This is awesome. I found it because, again, he had one game that he wanted. He thought it was an open board game, but apparently it was not. It was actually a Flash game. So I did add this and I have this on my personal setup because this is kind of cool. I will personally play this. I have an emulator for Flash games. And basically, old school, like, you know, mini clip, new grounds, kind of like the big, what's the word I want to use? The big kind of cartoon companies. They used to have those games, like you go to their website and you can play games. This emulator here has it. And it has 122,000, yes, 122,000 Flash games. He was looking at some kind of specific Mario game. Again, it was considered, he thought it was an open board game, but it was actually a Flash game. It must have been on a website, maybe Newgrounds. And it's in there. I'm going to launch that later on. But again, that is 122,000 games. I am not the type now to change my list from 36,000 games to 100 and 56,000 games because that's it's just no that's not what I'm going to do but those honestly are the main add-ons again we had the hack stuff we got open bore added and the flash games those are basically the main updates oh I'm sorry there's more <laughs> I forgot about the person from YouTube we do now have the Sega Saturn let's launch that real quick I'm not going to add the 122,000 games but just keep that in mind that yes there is an idea for that so right now, basically, the hard drives are spinning. We're at 257 for the Sega Saturn. And he did want, not he, I mean, Shilby didn't want it, but he's like, hey, Vic, you can add it. Uh, we do have the Panasonic 3DO for the person from YouTube. You're at 216. In total, it added more. It added 3963. 3,963 games. So 36,000 plus 3,963. Shield B's build is almost 40,000 games. 40,000 games. So it went from 36,000 to 40,000 on that. Awesome. All right, so now real quick, I always mention this in my videos, and if you're not doing it, you should do it. I mean, it's not for me. It's really for you. Anybody could do this, but Shield B also requested Steam. He doesn't have any Steam games, but he did request Steam, and I always put this on all my builds. I do always put the current gen game launchers, such as Epic Games, Steam, Battle.net, and Origin. I always put those in. And anytime somebody makes an order of me, I always ask them, listen, do you want to use your real email 
or do you want to use a fake email that I can make? She'll be said, hey, let's do the fake email route. Basically, this computer, I always use Gmail. This computer has his fake email account already logged in. So if he goes into Gmail, it'll bring up the, the email account. I've always said in my videos, you should definitely be hopping on Epic Games. Epic Games, like bi-weekly, they give you free games. Whether you have a powerful PC or not, you're getting free games. So just now I launched Epic Games and I just downloaded this Wonder Boy. I should say I purchased this. And basically when you pick a game, you have to press like get, it's going to send you a receipt. So he's going to get an Epic Games email with a receipt saying like, hey, confirm confirming your purchase. It is zero dollars, so it's no need to worry about it. But right now, like the big game that's free right now is Fall Guys, and Epic Games does have Fortnite on it. So he does have the current gen stuff. I just launched Fortnite by accident, but that is a okay. I always usually pre install, as you can see, I did pre install Fortnite and I did pre install Fall Guys. Um, I'm gonna most likely exit this out, but as you can see, he is able to play Fortnite. Again, these are free games, they are online based games. I've said it in the past, Epic Games does give you a couple of bangers. Free games. The biggest free game, which I personally still play, was Grand Theft Auto V. Again, Shield B doesn't have that because his account wasn't active or on or he didn't get it um, when, you know, he didn't get it when it was free. So just keep that in mind. Again, I always suggest that you do go into Epic Games and do it. He does have Battle.net, so games such as Warzone, he could do that. You can see it's there, play for free and such. The only thing about Battle.net right now is that you have to put your phone number in. Um, so I'll let him do that on his end. And again, he does have Steam. To my shock, I'm, I'm a big Counter-Strike player. CS is free. And I put it on his PC. And after you do a little update... It'll let you play Counter-Strike, which I am personally surprised with, and that is free. Uh, I do know that you can't play competitive play, but you're able to play Counter-Strike. Uh, you know, whether you're playing Classic or like me personally, um, I'll play like the um, arms race where it, the gun kind of changes as you go. So as you can see, you're able to play it, it'll configure, and then it'll launch. Uh, basically, all these games are set to the D drive. So this is running the regular hard drive. He could always swap it out and put like it to the M.2 SSD, but it's not really needed. Once the game launches, you're perfectly fine and A-OK. -okay. And again, we're right now gonna launch some Counter-Strike. And I'll do no cuts on this, but I was surprised to see Counter-Strike on this. Uh, me personally, I purchased Counter-Strike and uh, I play it. Uh, I'm a big CS fan, and Shield is able to play it. Like, no joke, you could hop on this and play. <laughs> I was shocked to see that Counter-Strike works. Now again, the big thing to keep in mind while this is loading, I'll do a quick game. Um, the launcher games, Battle.net, Origin is for Valorant. Um, those games are not in the Hyper Spoon Wheel, only because you have to launch these launchers you have to launch epic games to get into the game so outside of hyperspin yes you do have more games you just don't have them in hyperspin also it's kind of an advantage because you don't want hyperspin running in the background while you're playing these internet online based games it'll eat up your cpu and there's a lot of things going on his pc can handle it but like i said to be safe you always want to you know play these outside of it let's get a quick shot of it Again, he does have a wireless keyboard and mouse. There's two. <laughs> There's two quick headshots right there. Again, I'm not a pro at, I mean, growing up, Counter-Strike was big. But, uh, you know, somebody's gonna say, oh, you shot a bot, don't matter, shot the shots. Oh, there's one. <laughs> oh, peek. Pull out a document. Oh, <laughs> but there you go. So again, he requested Steam. He said he doesn't have Steam or an account, but if he actually does, he could always go in and launch it. So again, online-based stuff. I did give him a fake email account, and he's basically good to go. I also do put OBS Studios on all my computers. It is basically set and configured. 
All you have to do is though is you know you got to sign up for Twitch. You have to put your Twitch logins and stuff. But this right now is capturing the display. You go start streaming game on again. Ultimate console. <laughs> I can't believe I got a couple of kills on that. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna go into hyperspin. I have the Xbox controller in my hand, and the first thing I do want to show off is this the Flash Games wheel. Uh, basically, again, like I said, I have Flash Games set as its own kind of emulator. There's no games in this list. So if I just hold down the X button, it's going to launch. As you can see, it launched. So it's basically a standalone program. It's almost like how I set up my FX2, my FX3, uh, Clone Hero, and such. So as you can see with Windows 11, it has this red bar. It actually has the background still there. So that's the full screen. It's only in this emulator that it does that. I'm not sure why, but it's a okay basically it launches the actual program if i go to games i'm going to move it over you could see it right here on the bottom left right there that says 122,000 total games so again flash games this is old school like mini clip new grounds i mean this was like middle school stuff to me and it's actually got a very nice interface i do believe yes you do need internet for this because essentially it, it has like the game but as you can see you have to download the game they are they're tiny files i'm talking like tiny megabit type files but a couple of games might already be pre there it might just say play um but as you can see i'm going down the list and it says to download i was personally playing a game called park a lot um so if i look it up and I did this on live stream. It was kind of cool. You can see, like, see, like this live from Bikini Bottom. It says play, um, so you don't really need it. Uh, need to download it, but I believe that's because I already kind of no, I didn't. I didn't play that SpongeBob game. But basically, as you can see, Park A Lot to me is an old school game. I'm talking like middle school stuff, and I have the option to play. Inside of this has like, I think it's like five or six separate emulators. So as you can see, this opened up Adobe Flash Player. Um, again, these are flash games. I did a very simple double click to basically make it full screen. Parker? Not all the games will yeah. play full screen. That's not an I emulator thing. That's job. not a PC thing. It's just that's how this program works. And as you could say, old school park a lot. Uh, get out of the car's backspace. Okay, cool. I was playing this live and I couldn't figure out how to get out of the car. But as you can see, I do need my keyboard and mouse for this. I'm using my arrow keys to navigate and we're gonna park this car right now we're gonna try not to break anything oh <laughs> 113 again this right here i mean you're talking like computer class like you were done you were done like with your homework and boom like oh <laughs> awesome big thing is that basically when you're done playing this game you exit it doesn't exit the emulator it'll just exit that actual game Another one which I was amazed with was the original trials, like time trials. I'm going to actually take out the S and just put trial. And you're going to see a couple, as you can see here, see this trial bike? I grew up with this. This is where the amazing game now trials, this is where it started. And this is like the first game I looked up and as you can see, I could just press play. This is one of those that wasn't able to do full screen. As you can see, it won't do. Oh, it did. Oh, never mind. It did full screen. And right now, my, my, uh, my camera's. Moving. There you go. You have the bike guy there, right? Yeah. This again is where trial started. So again, this is classic. This is amazing. I could I could play this all day. <laughs> awesome. There you have it. If I exit out again, I'm exiting out the game itself, not the emulator. I'm gonna just do maybe a double tap on this or I have to actually press stop. As you can see, I'm hitting exit, nothing's happening. If I hit stop, now we're back. If I'm done playing this emulator, I simply exit and it brings me back into hyperspin. Awesome. Let's check a look real quick. Somebody requested it. That was the Sega Saturn stuff. So as you can see, I do have Sega Saturn. Long press on it, it'll enter in, and you got your list here. Uh, I don't know Sega Saturn, usually Sega means Sonic. Uh, so, Sonic 3D Blast? Why not? I'll hold down. Loading game. Basically, this is a file that needs to unzip. Anytime you see the long loading bar, it's basically unzipping and such. Not all the games are zipped. Zipping files does save space. 
Honestly, though, it is also something that Rocket Launcher needs sometimes, depending on the game. And we're going to get into some Sega Saturn. Again, using the Xbox controller, it's already pre-configured. Loading complete. That is what I do. Basically set and start. So Sega Saturn, you get the logo. This is in full screen stretched. This is not using my regular Sega emulator. Uh, basically like the Genesis, the Master System, the 32X, and the Game Gear uses one emulator. Uh, and it's actually very easy. Not easy, but... It's a little, basically out of four systems, I need to configure the controls just two times. Uh, so this is running a separate emulator, obviously. And again, using the Xbox controller, I just press start and I'm gonna press start again and we're able to game on. So I'm just making sure that we have game audio. That's the big thing. And awesome, sound test, I can just start. I have to press start. So again, depending on the emulator and the system, either A was gonna start the game, such as like NES, you have to actually press start or select to pick the options in the menu. And it's cool, I did not test all these games, obviously, I did a good 10 of them, and once I saw that 10 of them launched, it's set, it's good to go. Again, using the Xbox controller, as you can see, this just has a long loading time, not loading time, but going through a couple of things here. Using the D-pad, Play this. So again, this is for the person on YouTube. And I believe the Sega Saturn was a three button system. And I got it. I got A, B, and X map. I got audio coming in. So same thing if Shield B was to if Shield B no, if Shield B was to stream this, he basically would have to just go in, set up his either YouTube streaming keys or Twitch. Game on, you know, setting up the cameras and all that, like my setup is different, but you can also at least record gameplay, and you're cool. Long press the Xbox logo, I'm back at the hyper spin. I'm gonna bring it back, we're gonna run real quick with the Panasonic 3DO. Um, let's see where I have that set, and I have it right here. So Panasonic 3DO, I'm gonna long press in. Again, another system that I personally don't know, but I said somebody messaged me on YouTube and said, hey, can you get this? Why not try some Super Street Fighter 2 on 3DO? Long press on loading that. Game. As you can see, now loading. My big thing again, you long press that and let it do its thing. Don't go crazy spamming the button. Loading all that. complete. Let it do its thing and let it load. And just game on. Enjoy it. As you can see, we have the Panasonic 3DO. Let it do its thing. It's kind of cool because my Switch cabinet has like the Street Fighter stuff. Uh, I have Ultra Street Fighter in the background and I'm able to use my Xbox controller. I have it always set to the D-pad. That's the big thing. I just picked Ryu. As you can see, not totally stretched out. That's probably like a, like a 15 by seven, 15 by eight. I do it real quick if I can. Again, big thing is just kind of figuring out like your button combo. That's the big thing. So I am using the shoulder buttons on this. I can't do it on the D-pad. No. But yes, there you have it. Long press the Xbox logo, and it brings me out. Okay, to go. Awesome, 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 awesome. Let's touch base now real quick on the open door stuff. This is a big deal. Because open door is a pain in the butt, especially when it comes to controls. Uh, so we're gonna go into open door real quick. I basically have it towards the MS DOS area. Right here, so home main. So open door. Again, it went from 100 games to 400. As you can see, not all the artwork is there. The logos aren't there and such. It's just, there's too many games for it. The big deal when it comes to this open board thing is the controls. Um, I do have actually, honestly, I, I got a good handle on it. Most of the games are pre-configured. They will automatically Loading launch complete. into like full screen. It's just the controls are always like an iffy thing. Uh, as you can see right now, I'm launching this GI Joe game. I'm basically gonna be doing a couple things to show 
It's really for um, show me to see. So as you can see, I'm able to control. I'm not gonna say that it works flawlessly on all the games, because I'd be lying to you. But right now I'm able to control. The most common thing is the arrow keys are set to like the directional. That's fine. The only big thing is like, you might have to go into options. You might have to go into control option. You might have to set up player one. For some reason, player one, I can't, it won't like save as like controller. So I am using Joy to Key to get this all mapped out. As you can see, left control, left all, and such. Honestly, you might even need to go to the keyboard and basically it's either enter or the space bar, I should say, as like your enter key uh, and stuff like that. So if I go to start game, I do have this already set to like the Xbox controller because I did test this game. Uh, I can pick two characters apparently. I'm gonna press A. Again, it depends on like, as you can see, I'm playing, flying this plane. I'm gonna go to Cobra Island. It very much, it varies on the game. Like, you know, not all like the controls are like the same for each game. Uh, basically, it's using the four face buttons and the two shoulders. So some games, it's like A is to jump always. Um, X might be your first attack, or it might be like the left shoulder. That's like the one thing that just annoys me with Hope War is that it's just not a universal thing. You're gonna have to just figure it out as you go. Um, so as you can see, I'm able to play, awesome. Big thing is that sometimes Open World, when you long press the Xbox logo, it may or may not like exit. Real quick, just so you guys know, when you keep seeing, you, you keep, I'm gonna exit out. Um, really, you should have nothing in the background running. I do have Steam running in the background, which is why you kind of see this opened up. I'm gonna exit Steam real quick. Normally, I don't have Steam launching when the PC starts. So again, because I filmed this and I was doing Steam, that's why you get those little pop-ups. Be sure like, you know, I could turn off Steam that's big big mode or whatever. I'll do that beforehand, but I'm gonna go back into open more. As you can see though, Hyperspin does come back to the front. It's just, I don't like those kind of little pop-ups. Again, you don't want anything running in the background. Um, he did recommend or want this kind of battle game. Uh, let me see if I can find it. This, this, no, is it battle? This one. Battle Stormer Classic. So let's run this. As you can see, no artwork, Loading no complete. video. Let's just see. I don't think I even... Okay, this is awesome here. So as you can see right now, this game launched. Audio is good. Like I said, I was having a big issue, especially with this game. And a couple of words, no sound. But I could see sound is on my meter. But click, it didn't launch full screen. So I do have select. If you hold down select, it will bring it to full screen, as you can see. I'm watching my stream. Awesome. The hard thing like with this kind of emulator is like the escape key is like to bring it back, but then the escape key also exits the game. Uh, it's, again, it depends on the game itself. Uh, again, I'm gonna launch back into Battlestormer. As you can see Loading though, I launched complete. it in full screen. It didn't save it. This specific one, you can even see that it's actually a Mugen game. Um, it is what it is, but the game right now is configured and such. Again, if I long press my select, it'll bring me to full screen. I can see the menu bar. Like I said, as you can see, even me exiting with full screen enabled. Uh, yeah, this is one key. Go to Eagles Big. I must have the key. And uh, I hope you're happy to because it's working. I had the audio. This is like one, this is like the first one on this list. So as you can see, like I'm using the shoulder buttons, I'm using every face button, and it's working. But like shit, his like health bar is not even moving. Oh there we go. <laughs> but again, these are these are user-created games on it, and I just hope you enjoy this man. And as you can see, unfortunately, it doesn't not a system thing, it's not your computer, it's just, this is how this specific game is. I guess they're both save like a full screen or whatever. I'm gonna long press X, Xbox button, and it's gonna bring me back, and awesome. Like I said, depending on what game you launch, it's either gonna launch great with the control Loading working complete. or not. As you can see, Open Board is on the top left, it's gonna go full screen. These games right now that like launch full screen, I've made them work as you can see they work great it's awesome it's all about kind of figuring out if like 
your controls will work and such. See, like this kind of stuff, I'm pressing like A, it's not skipping anything. I'm even using the keyboard, it's not skipping. But you just have to let this go. It's This is just how the, the game is. I'm gonna long press the Xbox logo and bring it back. Awesome. So far, awesome stuff. Let's check it out real quick. So even in this list right close, I did put the NES hacks and I put the Super Nintendo hacks. I was gonna put it next to Super Nintendo and NES, but I feel like him with this kind of menu here, it'll work. If I go into NES, like I said, no video. You kind of just have this thing. Look at how many Zeldas there are. There's so many Zeldas. Uh, again, so many like Mario's. Look at this, Techno Super Bowl. Again, me Percy, this doesn't... Look, look, I'm still on the Super Bowl. <laughs> NCAA, Super Mario Bros, uh, Retro Mario Bros, RPG. There's, there's just a lot. There's, there's a lot of hacks going on. Honestly, I downloaded a pack, and that is how it is. I'm gonna basically pick a game. Let's just pick this. I don't know. Long press. Watching my stream and good to go. Awesome. So this is, I don't even know what, what this is. I think this was like Ghost and Goblins game. Full screen. I had to do a couple of things to make, this is using the same emulator as my NES game, NES ROMs, my regular NES. I had to do a couple of things with the rocket launcher to get this working. Uh, but yeah, again, show me with a quick, I need my high game. Bet money. Got it. Awesome. Again, I am using the Xbox controller. I died. Awesome. Long press the Xbox logo. It's going to bring me back. Again, I could see it there. I have full control of Hyperspin. We're going to bring it back. Let's do the same thing for Super Nintendo. Same thing. Again, it was a pre downloaded um, ROM pack. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to sugarcoat you. I did not download the ROM pack. I did not test all 400 and 200 games. But. Out of like the Loading 10 game. that I tested, Loading complete. boom, launches. Awesome. Love it. I love it when stuff like that happens, right? So, again, this looks like a 2008. It, it said 2008. This is, again, I guess your classic. And this is the Super Nintendo, so this is probably like... I don't want to say the wrong Mario. It's suddenly on my recording. <laughs> But yes, this is, this works. Wow, awesome. This is an interesting Mario, Mario start. And uh, like I said, I'm able to game on with the Xbox controller. Awesome. So far, so good. Again, like I said, we got the extra stuff. I wanted to show off the, um, I, died. I definitely wanted to show off like the Flash game stuff. You exit out. We got back into hyperspin. So somebody in the chat was saying, hey, you know, as you can see right now, hyperspin in, out, launching, in, out, launching. As you can see, it is good stuff. Um, MS DOS does work. Uh, again, a lot of stuff. I was like, oh, again, like I said, my kid's gonna learn how to type from Mario Teacher's Type. So long press on A, and it will launch Loading MS DOS. Complete. Gotta use the keyboard. Like I said, I was launching this. I should actually exit because of the music. I'm not gonna play that. But as you can see, I escaped with keyboard and i'm back the reason why i exited is because of the music stuff i don't want to get hit with some copyright stuff but all in all we're doing some solid stuff let me touch base real quick uh i'm gonna make a separate video on this but i'll do it real quick i found and discovered something with the wii which some people might like it's actually gonna be an advantage we're just gonna watch a super mario all-stars game so i said it in my past Loading videos complete. that the wii you got to kind of figure out like if you're gonna play with one player, if you're gonna play with two player. And in those videos, I actually had it where like, you had to do it before launching the game. Basically the little hack now is if you hold the select key, it'll minimize dolphin. You grab your mouse, if I can find it, there it is. You drag down and then here now, dolphin is launched in the background. You can now adjust your stuff here. So I have right now four Wiimotes active. I could disable the two can mark it as none. As you can see, it is reading up in Dolphin. Uh, again, this kind of hack does go for because some Wii games, you have to turn the controller, like the Wiimote. So basically, instead of pre-going into Dolphin, like I said in my past videos, this is just so much cleaner and easier. Once you press save, 
you go back into the game, long press the select key, you're back into full screen. Woo! It's just amazing when stuff comes together. Long press the Xbox logo, bring it back. I usually like to bring it back with the R trigger, as you can see. Shield Beast PC, I'm able to hold the Xbox logo. But I usually long press trigger, and boom. Again, to clarify, as you saw before, I was bouncing in and out of the games. We did get this Steam kind of window popping up. Usually, again, when the PCs start, I don't have any of these launchers set to start on Windows. Um, that's really the reason why, because you don't want a bunch of stuff in the background. You want some clean stuff. And that was honestly the only reason why you saw that. Once I exited the games, the pre-launchers, you're pretty much set, good to go. But I'm just happy to see, even with that stuff, Steam in the background, Epic Games, you did get a quick flash. I'm not going to cut that in the video, but Hyperspin came back to the front. It is just a beautiful thing when you see everything come together. There you guys have it. Stay tuned. Again, like I said, I'm waiting on the dual light guns to come in. Um, he is wanting a lot of RGB in his case. He even wants the mini screens in his PC case. He wants a lot of like the LED um, SATA wire stuff going on. So right now, I'm just happy that Hyperspin works. Everything works great as far as Windows 11. Awesome stuff. There you guys have it. VicVP, Game Case Arcade. Stay tuned for a lot more stuff. I got a bunch of builds going on. Woo! That's it. Game on, guys. Game on. <laughs>